And then there was just one race left. Where has this weekend gone for the Tillotson T4 Nations Cup 2022? On the Catadromo Internacional Lucas Guerrero, just near the city of Valencia in Spain. It's been an amazing weekend. We've had four different winners in our finals from four different nations. It really has been a sensational challenge all the way through. And now we are going to give ourselves one more sensational challenge as the battle continues in earnest for the Tillotson T4 Nations Cup. We had a win yesterday in the three-hour endurance race for the Netherlands for the Peter Brothers Avora team. Earlier today, Jindra Svoboda in the Czech Republic for the T4 mini final. Then it was a victory for Truly Adams for the United States of America in the T4 Juniors. We've just watched Kalai Atkins go from gamer to champion in fantastic fashion in the T4 Senior. Now it's time for what could be the toughest, roughest, and most brutal race of the entire weekend, the T4 Senior 165s. And it's going to be a Belgian, a Frenchman, a Brit, a German, and a pair of Brazilians in the top six. Well, it's said to be a fantastic affair. We haven't been disappointed so far with the T4 165s, a grid of hugely experienced racers in its majority. The top six glued together for pretty much every race we have seen, as we can see Julien Granvaux and the pole position man of Jensen Adriansen's there talking with our race director, getting a few words of instruction for the race start, same as both of uh, all of the other classes, the front two drivers being told, how is it going to work? You have to keep the pace down. You have to let everyone form up behind you. And of course, you have to stick in the tram lines, which is something that we've seen a few people making a mistake about going out of the tram lines in a very interesting, uh, very interesting set of mistakes there. Not entirely sure what's been causing it. Has it just been a, a tactical infringement, as you might call it? Because they do seem to be quite clear the tram lines it's got the grid markings surrounded by white lines so it is quite simple to drive within but uh, nevertheless we will be getting underway in a few moments time when uh, the drivers are finished taking some pictures and they've all jumped into their carts as we can see there Julian Granvaux the 469 he has won one of the heats so far and he is always a contender up at the front and he's going to be looking to take another win this one, the most important. Racers, start your engines. They get the three minute command. Always wanted to say that on a live broadcast. The Tillotson T4 Nations Cup is gonna to come to a conclusion with just one final remaining, and that is the T4 Senior 165. It's been an amazing race weekend. So far, we have had four different countries win the four finals that have taken place so far this weekend. I'm a sucker, I dearly would love it to be five different nations in the top five positions. I really, really would. And certainly Jensen Adriansens of Belgium has a great chance to make it his from pole position. He's always been there or thereabouts, hasn't he, Jensen Adriansens? It's never quite been the perfect weekend for him. And up to this point, he has yet to take a race victory. Despite starting from pole position, he has had some amazing performances a trio of second places across the qualifying heats, then second again in the super heat. He has never finished a race lower than second position. This is his chance to go one better and put Belgium on the top step of the podium in the last race of the weekend. But Julien Granvaux of France, Anwar Beral-Smith of the United Kingdom, and Andreas Matis of Germany, those two drivers you are now looking at on the second row of the starting grid. And then on the third row of the grid, we have the two Brazilians, Felipe Braga and Roberto Woodstruck Jr., who will line up on the third row of the starting grid. Felipe Braga under an Italian license, but he is a very proud Brazilian. The guy in the background there alongside Roberto Woodstruck Jr. The man in P5 on the grid, the number 433, Felipe Braga, to the left of your screen in the third position slot. Uh, he was the mechanic to the newly crowned world champion, Matthias Mogato, the first Brazilian world karting champion for 24 years, nearly a quarter of a century. And uh, while Matthias celebrates back home in Brazil, it is very much uh, the time for Felipe Braga to uh, cruise in the sunshine here in Valencia. We just saw Jaime Labastida and Phil Pignataro, the Mexican and the American. And then to round out the top 10, it's going to be the German talent, Dirk Prochnov, alongside the Irishman, Niall Hursen. 
So they will finish off in fine style here in the Tillerton T4 Nations Cup 2022, the last final of the weekend. So far, there have been victories for the Netherlands, the Czech Republic, the United States of America, and the United Kingdom. Are we going to get five different nations from five finals here this weekend? I, for one, would dearly love to see it as it would showcase just how competitive the racing has been in the Tillotson T4 Nations Cup. And what it would also do is make the win in the Nations Cup a really pleasant surprise and a bit of a lottery. But we will find that out at the podium ceremony a little later on. It's time to go racing, though, in the T4 Senior 165 final. Jensen Adrensens and Julian Granvaux from Anwar Beral Smith and Andreas Matisse, Felipe Braga and Roberto Woodstruck Jr. from Jaime Labastida and Phil Pignataro, then Dirk Prochnov and Niall Hersen. Juan Pablo Glover and Vladimir Vlasov from Darren Beavers and Harm Sherman, Aaron Doyle and Ryan Hersen from Jamie Going and Walter Kessler, then Rudolf Berzin and Fernando Vila. So it's going to be a really interesting end to the weekend. And we could well come through with five different nations winning the five finals. And I genuinely couldn't tell you at this point which nation is set to triumph in the T4 Nations Cup. But by the end of this race, we will know for sure as the final points will be calculated and our podium ceremony will obviously be a big moment for the winning nation. Don't forget, we're not just going to have our T4 final podiums across Mini, Junior, Senior and 165. We're also going to have the pole position trophies given out by Maxis Tyres. Uh, they will go to the pole position lifters from timed qualifying yesterday. So that means there is also going to be a separate uh, trophy presentation. The T4 Mini trophy in the Maxis trophy will obviously go to George House. The T4 Juniors, that will go to the American Chase Buscalia. In the T4 Senior, that will go to Kalai Atkins. And in the T4 Senior 165, that is, of course, going to go the way of Andreas Matisse. So those four drivers, George House, Chase Pascalia, Kalai Atkins and Andreas Matisse, their presence will be requested at the podium after this final because they will have the Maxis pole position trophy presented to each of them after this final, which will obviously celebrate their pole positions from time qualifying. So those four drivers, please make sure you stick around because you'll still get a trophy on the top of the podium from the Maxis pole position trophy. Meanwhile, though, we are 14 laps away from discovering the identity of the winning nation of the Tillotson T4 Nations Cup and the winning driver in the T4 Senior 165 final. 14 laps of racing, a very tough race in prospect for our contenders, and they've definitely given us a very exciting run up to this point so far. We were always going to have a really exciting challenge for the contenders as they gear ourselves up ready for an exciting battle. Just a shave under 20 kilometers of racing to decide this final. But as they come through out of the final turn, it's going to be Adriansons, Granvo, Beryl Smith, Matis, Braga, Woodstrack Jr. Will we race? Yes, we do. Let's race at Valencia for the last time. Up to the first corner, good start from Jensen Adriansons and a very good start indeed from Anwar Biral smith and from Felipe Braga. They've all broken through to the top three. No worries at all from then. Julian Granvo has to slot into P4 as they work their way through on the first couple of corners. A great start from Roberto Wattstrack Jr. as well. The Brazilian has come up into fifth position. So a very good start indeed from the two Brazilian talents. Braga and Wattstrack Jr. They have managed to get themselves into third and fifth respectfully. But there is a very clean start from the drivers behind as they work their way through the first few corners. Everybody just trying to to keep it nick and nip and tuck but this is going to be an interesting challenge from Anwar Beral Smith who doesn't want to wait around too long to get his move on Jensen Adriansons but the Belgium is out in front he certainly is and that is a great thing for the Belgian driver managing to maintain that lead from Anwar Beral Smith and the uh, the 469 of Julien Granvaux, who has unfortunately lost his second place off the start, but only losing one position. That is considering a reasonably good start from the disadvantageous side of the grid as they come on to start their second lap now. It is still Jensen Adriansons who is in the lead as they come down into turn one. But look at this, Roberto Woodstruck Jr. battling with, I believe that is the 147 or the 178 that of Antonio. Is it Granvo? It's Granvo. That is Julian Granvo. 
And they've lost a bit of ground there, actually, dropping down the order. Oh, no, sorry, that is not ground, but that is Andreas Matisse. It is. So the German Andreas Matisse, who is there in fifth position. So Matisse was down behind Woodstruck Jr. But on that lap, the German, who got the Maxis pole position trophy yesterday, and he will receive that later this afternoon, is uh, managing to make his way back through to fifth position. But as you can see already, the top four have seen the writing on the wall, and they're going to try and pull clear of Andreas Matisse, the German driver getting himself into fifth position. So it's Adriansen, Beryl Smith, Braga and Granvo. It certainly is. And that battle for position number five, it could hot up if the uh, the if uh, Matisse and uh, Woodstruck Jr. start battling. Obviously, Woodstruck Jr. this time last week was uh, still on the high from marrying his fiance. I believe her name is uh, Gabriella. So congratulations to both of them as we see a move coming into turn one. That is Felipe Braga going up the inside of Beryl Smith and that is a fantastic move up the inside into turn one and now he goes hunting after the Belgian Jensen Adriansen he's going to be coming under increasing pressure however Julien Granvaux behind watch him he's just set the fastest lap of the race with a 106.6 lap time that is a good lap time it's very competitive and he is going to be closing them down currently sitting in P4 but he might not be sitting there for too long as we look into turn number 10 as we see the top four still very much together, this battle for first could become a six or eight cart battle if we're not too careful. And I wouldn't at all be surprised if that happens based on the racing we've seen so far today in the T4165s. Coming down into turn 13, still line astern, J uh, Jensen Adriansen and Felipe Braga still battling away, bouncing over those curbs, leaving no room on the table as they rock it down past the commentary box and into turn one. No moves being made just yet by Felipe Braga, the Brazilian racing under the Italian flag, but still very much in it for Brazil. Coming down into turn three, still no moves being made as Andrea Matisse takes the fastest lap with a 103.6, three tenths faster than the previous best lap as we file our way through turn seven and eight. No heroics so far in the race. Everyone taking it nice and calm. Only lap three of 14 at this stage. But as we come down into turn 10, Felipe Braga is going to be getting a bit impatient now because there is a gap behind, but it is shrinking quite rapidly with Anwar Birel Smith rocketing up behind the leading two and behind him there is another one, two, three, four, five, maybe even six drivers waiting and uh, prowling trying to take that first position off of whoever it may be, be it Jensen Adriansen or Felipe Braga. It's a grand total of eight drivers battling for the lead this time. Adriansen, Braga, Beral Smith, Granvo, Matis, Woodstruck Jr., Pignataro and Lavastida. All eight drivers really going to go for it now. 1.7 seconds between them all. And they keep it nice and tidy. Wouldn't it be absolutely spectacular if Felipe Braga could win the T4 Senior 165 final for Brazil just two weeks after his boy wonder Matis Mogato became FIA Karting World Champion. That would be a special moment for both men. And I think Matis Mogato would be as emotional watching along back in Brazil as he was two weeks ago in Sano when he won the title of the World Championship on his own. So now Adriansen's trying to fend off from his uh, Brazilian rival. But here comes Anwar Beral-Smith and also Julian Granvo. Julian Granvo looking pretty hungry there in fourth position. Tucked up behind the British driver Anwar Beral-Smith. Here comes the moment from Felipe Braga up the inside of Jensen Adriansen. Perfectly done. Gets a little bit of curb though. So both drivers are going to have to ease off the power. Jensen Adriansen is going to try and get back. Braga's going to squeeze him. Watch out for Anwar Beral-Smith on the inside line as well. Adriansen takes the lead back from Braga almost in the time it took me to say it. And so a very nice run there. And here comes Braga back again for more. Takes the lead into the chicane. So Braga retakes the lead. Adrian says he's coming back at him. Braga having to shut the door once more. But Felipe Braga for Brazil is leading in the final here in Valencia. And this is a fantastic race emerging. Remember when we said it could easily be a six-cart battle 
for the win. Well, it certainly is. In fact, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards as Robert Woodstruck Jr. runs wide on the exit of turn 10. Doesn't lose out a huge amount, I don't believe. Don't think he lost any positions. Oh, never mind. He did lose one to Julien Granvo, and he has now traded that fifth position for a sixth as we look into turn 13. Oh, the tightest, the tightest of margins there. Look out for Matis. Matis is suddenly going to try and emerge on the scene here in fourth position as Adriansen's had to bail off the throttle, had to feather it a little bit. Anwar Beral Smith still finds himself in third. Watch for Andreas Matiz as side by side. There comes Julian Granvo trying to shake off Woodstrack Jr. once again. We're on lap seven, the halfway home mark of this final, and it is very close indeed. But Felipe Braga leads from Jensen Andreasen. Then it is Beral Smith, Andreas Matiz, Julian Granvo, Roberto Woodstrack Jr. from Phil Pignataro and Jaime Labastida of Mexico. So it is a very tight run all the way through from the front to the back of this conflagration. And I can tell you there's only one nation represented twice, and that is Brazil in the top eight. Braga leading the way, although he is under an Italian license on a technicality. He is still very much hoping to win this race for Brazil. He certainly is, and I wouldn't put it out of the equation. The number 433 currently leading the way. He has the pace, but he is being overtaken straight out of turn 12. Jensen Adrianson's up the inside into turn 13. He takes the place back in a masterful display, but not for too long. Felipe Braga straight away takes the position back. He says, no, thank you. I am going back up the inside. You leave the door open for me. I will walk through it as they come down into turn one look at this train of cards every single one of these drivers is in with a chance of securing the t4165 nations cup championship who would have thought it would come down to eight incredible races it's an amazing battle so far drivers still trying to pick their moment they are line astern. There's a good battle going on for ninth as well between Niall Hurston, Dirk Proknov, Vladimir Vlasov and Juan Pablo Glover. So they're having a good battle. Here we go. Jensen and Andreas is on the inside of Braga. Retakes the lead, but drifts wide. Braga gets back alongside. Watch for Anwar Birol Smith trying to cut through on the inside line of Braga. Braga holds it round the outside, but Anwar Birol Smith is still to the inside line. No, you don't, says the Brazilian. Hanging on a second place. Braga now takes on Jensen and Andreas sits down the back straight. It's Belgium, Brazil, Britain, Germany, France, Brazil, USA and Mexico. Absolutely fever pitch. And Braga has managed to save his bacon back in a second place. Charging back on terms with Jensen Andreasen. Six laps to go and still unpredictable as ever. Nobody making the big dive to the inside line. So it's tight as ever before. It certainly is. I mean, let's just take a look at the gaps. Less than one tenth of a second between the top two. Then a tenth and a half back. Then just over a tenth back to the fourth position driver of Andreas Matisse as they flow their way through the middle sector. Then behind Andreas Matisse, we have Julian Granvo, two tenths of a second across the line, and then one point, not point, one seven seconds from uh, Roberto Woodstruck Jr., I do believe that is, to uh, Julian Granvo just in front of him. Anyways, as we look back to the action, coming through turns 11 and 12, Jensen Adrianson pulling out a slight lead now over Felipe Braga, but it won't last for long. Look at this now. Andreas Matisse, I believe that is. Or it could be... Never mind, it is uh, Viral Smith going up into third, looking for the move up the inside of Felipe Braga. Can't make it work, though. Coming through the final corner onto the start-finish straight. Rocketing down past the commentary box once again. That fantastic roar of the engines as they come past us. The TP225 RS engine, 15 horsepower each, multiplied by eight. There you go. There's the maths. You do the maths on how many horsepower that is in total as they come through the second sector once again. Beryl Beatrice. Smith, oh, it's oh, come together. Oh, no. Beryl Smith that is tangles terrible. with Felipe Braga. Braga Smith puts his track. hand up. Braga he... is in the middle of the track on the exit of turn number eight. That yep. is a very dangerous position, and I wouldn't be surprised if we are going to go under yellow flag oh, conditions. Oh, unbelievable. Braga is out of the fight. So too is Beryl Smith. And my Beryl Smith, the first one to put his hand up and say, sorry, that was my mistake. But it's too late for Felipe Braga, who had to cut across the grass in the hope that he could rejoin. But I'm afraid it's all gone wrong for Felipe Braga and Anwar Berard Smith with five laps to go. They are out of the hunt for victory. So now it suddenly goes the way. Red flags, red flags by the look of it. Red flags on the main straight. So red flags, I'm afraid. 
And uh, they're going to stop the race on the main straight then. So uh, red flag conditions as the contenders are there together on the main straight. They will come to a stop on the main straight. Now, we have completed nine laps of racing before the point of the red flag. So uh, a bit of an interesting situation there for the contenders. But uh, obviously the red flag is there because Felipe Braga has come to a stop in the middle of the racetrack. Now, we have completed nine laps. We didn't quite get to the end of lap 10. So we've still got five laps in duration. Now, this is a bit of an interesting situation in the last race of the day because we could end up with a race being restarted. The driver's trying to go round again to the end of the lap, but they have been told to stop out on the circuit. So uh, they are under red flag conditions. So uh, a bit of a tricky situation then for the contenders in this race. We're not entirely sure what this is going to mean and it looks as though Felipe Braga is out of the cart so they have managed to extricate him from the machine but uh, it looks as though he's had a fairly difficult landing uh, in the cart when there was that contact with Anwar Beral Smith so uh, he is uh, out of the cart they've managed to uh, move the cart away from the racing line so uh, the medical team are just down there giving him some uh, expert support they obviously have to make sure that uh, Anwar Beral Smith is uh, okay. Well, Anwar Beral Smith is okay, of course, but it's uh, Felipe Braga that was involved in that incident as well. So uh, obviously those two carts uh, coming together, but it is uh, some medical attention that's needed, just part of protocol proceedings, you understand. Uh, the ambulance is coming through. This is, again, just part of the protocol proceedings. There's no need to panic. This is uh, just part of the uh, procedure. They obviously have to run through when a driver has... Uh, ended up having an incident which has led to a red flag and uh, obviously uh, medical attention is just needed as a protocol measure and uh, a slight precaution so we will let you know what the situation is we've technically still got five laps to run it could end up as a five lap sprint but uh, they could end up also declaring the race after nine laps have been completed i think it's got to be under 75 percent distance that they can uh, easily declare a race they may